Hello everyone, thanks so much for taking the time to check out this video. Today I'm gonna to be offering a highly demanded presentation on how to determine the date of manufacture on virtually any Chinese SKS pattern carbine, whether or not it was made by State Arsenal 296, AKA Triangle 26. As brief context for this video, I know many of you have read in forums or otherwise been told that it's impossible to determine the date of so-called non-26 Type 56 carbines. The Reddit commandos out there very sincerely act like 50-year-old Chinese military markings are no more decipherable than 5,000-year-old hieroglyphics, and unsurprisingly, that's simply not true. The reality is that about 90% of Chinese SKS patterns have a date code incorporated into their serial number. And while there is a little bit of nuance and practice that goes into being able to correctly identify and interpret these date codes, it's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. So without further ado, go ahead and grab your Chinese SKS pattern carbine and follow along because regardless of which factory your rifle was made at, I think I can give the vast majority of you a good idea of what year it was made. So let's start by looking at the basic serial number format followed by most Chinese SKS pattern carbines. And if you're not picking up on the emphases in my voice, I'm trying to not so subtly communicate that this is not gonna be all encompassing. If at any time you feel convinced that you have one of these slim fraction of Chinese SKS pattern carbines, which doesn't fit into the serialization format I'm about to show you, feel free to jump ahead using the chapters uh, that are listed below, because I will cover some of the most common exceptions at the end of this video. That aside, 90% of the Chinese SKS pattern carbines that you might encounter will have a serial number which consists of seven to eight numerical digits with no alphabetical prefix or suffix. Please note that tons of importers of Chinese weapons into the US added alphabetical suffixes, usually suffixes, sometimes prefixes, those are meaningless marks. And I know that for a lot of people who might not be super uh, familiar with Chinese SKS pattern carbines, it might be hard to tell between an import added alphabetical suffix and an original Chinese military alphabetical prefix. Um, for now, just go ahead and say, if you have a seven to eight digit numerical serial number with an alphabetical prefix or suffix, just go ahead and assume uh, that that's gonna be a meaningless import marking. But um, if you, if you kind of know this stuff and you, you think that's an original Chinese uh, alphabetical prefix, go ahead and jump in the exceptional circumstances at the end of this video, because I will cover a couple of those because they are out there, but the vast majority of the time, um, alphabetical suffixes or sometimes prefixes are going to be uh, meaningless import marks. So hopefully 90% of you are still with me and you are looking at a seven to eight digit numerical serial number, which may or may not have meaningless import marks added, but we're focusing on those numerical digits. So buckle up, because this is the meat and potatoes of the video right here. That seven to eight digit serial number you're looking at is actually two separate numbers, a date code and a production number. Sometimes these numbers are even stamped separately. And if that sounds too simple to be true, well, that's because it is. Um, usually the two distinct numbers are stamped in a continuous sequence. And without that clear delineation, people end up getting paralyzed, trying to distinguish exactly where the date code stops and the production number starts. In fairness to them, much of this seems to come from the fact that it's actually surprisingly difficult to know where to draw that line. There's no simple rule that works 100% of the time. And for decades, certain people have promoted oversimplified techniques, like the date code starts at the millionth place. I'm guessing a lot of you have heard that. And while well-intended and sometimes perfectly viable, this doesn't work all the time and ultimately leads to confusion. Inevitably, when people realize that it doesn't work all the time, they start to promote equally unfounded claims, like certain rifles can't be dated. We just don't know what to do when all it really comes down to is having a little cognitive flexibility and being able to observe serial numbers within their context and actively discern what the components of that serial number mean. It's a bit more complicated than just counting decimal places, but I think if you stick with me for the next 10 minutes or so, you will find that it really is pretty manageable when we break it down. So let's talk about production numbers first because they're fairly simple. 
Production numbers are a sequential procession of assigned numbers which correspond to the actual total production per year per factory. For example, the first rifle of the year at a given factory would have the production number of one, or maybe 101 or maybe 1001. For whatever reason, some factories don't actually start at one, but that part really doesn't matter. The point is that wherever they start, the second rifle is going to be the next number in line. So that might be two, 102, or 1002, whatever. Then comes three, then comes four, so on and so forth until the end of the year, at which point they would change the year code and reset the production number back to the starting value. Now, an important thing that separates Chinese production numbers from, say, Soviet or Romanian production numbers is that the Chinese include all decimal values, even if they are zero. So while the Soviets would represent the 23rd rifle in a production block as 23, the Chinese would represent it as 000023. So now is when you might be thinking, well, that makes it super easy, right? The rightmost six digits are going to be the production number, and anything to the left of that, aka the millionth place, is going to be the date code, right? Well, not quite. During the early days of production, in which State Arsenal 296 was averaging 200,000 units per year, a six-digit production code made sense. Well, around the late 1960s and early 1970s, some new and smaller factories got into the Type 56 carbine production game, and overall demand decreased across the board. So we saw average production volume per factory dip well below 100,000. As a result of that, many factories, including State Arsenal 296, had years in which they dropped that sixth digit altogether. To return to our earlier example of unit number 23, that would now be represented as 000023 rather than 000023. In summary, a production number is a five or six digit sequence which reflects actual sequential production per factory per year. And the only way to know if it's five or six digits is to have some background knowledge and to think about it critically. One super important data point which is valuable in making these distinctions is to know that the highest production number ever in Chinese Type 56 carbine history is going to be 600,140, which was recorded at the end of 1966 by State Arsenal 296. In other words, if you've identified what you believe to be a production number, and that's greater than 600,140, you've made a mistake. Another significant data point is that pretty much the only other years that exceeded 300,000 units were 1964, 1965, 1966, and 1967, all of which, of course, were limited to State Arsenal 296, AKA Triangle 26. So if you've got what you think to be a six digit production number that starts with a three, a four, a five, or even a six, but isn't on a mid 1960s Triangle 26 marked Type 56 carbine, again, something's gone wrong. Statistically speaking, most production numbers will be values in the 10,000s with a zero, a one, a two, or no digit at all in the 100,000th place. So now let's talk about why most of you are really here, which is date codes. Date codes are generally going to be the first one to two digits of the serial number. Technically, three-digit date codes do exist, but they're rare enough that I'm going to ignore them in the main body of this video, and we're going to talk about them again in the exceptions section at the end of the video. So there are really two types of date codes, and those are going to be what I call representative and direct. Representative date codes use one number to represent another number. In this case, these date codes represent the year of production, with 1956 being year one. That leaves us with a handy dandy formula of representative date code plus 1955 equals year of production. So if we look at, for example, this rifle marking here, which was, by the way, so considerate as to leave the date code separate, we can take that number three, add it to 1955, and sure enough, this is a 1958 production example. Nothing changes when we break into the double digits. Here we have a two-digit date code of 10, and sure enough, 
That's a 1965 example. Now, many of you have surely been told that this only works for Triangle 26 marked rifles, and I'm here to tell you that that's very clearly false. There is a mountain of evidence indicating that this works just as well for non-26 marked Type 56 carbines, possibly with even fewer exceptions, statistically speaking, but I digress, and we're gonna look at that again in a moment. In the meantime, just be aware that representational date codes will be one or two digits, and will have values ranging from two to somewhere in the 30s, probably, corresponding to production years of 1967 to somewhere in the late 1980s or early 1990s, possibly later. The good news is that whether or not representational date codes stop in the early 30s or keep going higher, there's no way to confuse them with direct date codes because direct date codes are literally just the last two digits of the actual date. This didn't start until the 1970s and was definitely most popular in the late 80s and early 90s. The main takeaway here is that direct date codes are gonna be two digits and are literally gonna be the year of production, i.e. 91 equals 1991. If you really need a formula for this one too, it would be direct date code plus 1900 equals year of production. So now that we've really broken down production numbers and date codes, let's summarize what we've learned and try to apply it in practice. Most Chinese SKS patterns have a seven or eight digit numerical serial number, which can be broken down into a five or six digit production number and a one or two digit date code. There is no simple trick for breaking apart these two serial number elements. So the only reliable means of doing this is to understand what we're looking for and apply a little bit of critical reasoning to figure out what ultimately makes the most sense. As we critically evaluate the serial number, we should remember that our production number will be less than 600,140. Additionally, we should remember that almost all Triangle 26 marked rifles will have six digit production numbers, whereas it is far more common in non-26 marked rifles to have five digit production numbers, although both are present on both types of rifles. Additionally, we should remember that date codes will almost always be one or two digits and will be representational or direct in nature. If the date code is one digit, it is a representational date code corresponding to the years 1957 through 1964. If it is two digits, it can be representational or direct, but distinguishing between those two is super easy. If the number is 70 or higher, just add it to 1900 and you have your year of production. If that number is in the 30s or lower, add it to 1955 and that's your date of production. Lastly, it really helps to have a fundamental grasp of Chinese SKS pattern feature development and history because that can really help in the critical thinking process. For example, you can avoid absolutely the most common and annoying error of all in dating, which is when people think they have a first year production, 1956 carbine, because their serial number has a one in the millionth place. And they lack the historical context to realize that their rifle is covered in features and markings that didn't exist in 1956. Not to mention there isn't actually even a date code on rifles manufactured in 1956, because that's gonna be one of the first exceptions we talk about at the end of this video. So now that I've explained this the best I can, let's go ahead and practice deciphering a few serial numbers together. Let's start with a relatively easy one. And if you wanna to pause to think this one through on your own first, I highly recommend that. If you're ready to move forward, however, let's break it down together. So let's go through the process of elimination on this serial number. We know that the date code is gonna be one or two digits, meaning that the date code in this case is either gonna be one or 18. Well, if you were listening to me 15 seconds ago or whatever, I just said that the date code can't be one because there is no representational date code for first year production rifles. That's an exception. And we know that it can't be a direct date code because that would be 1901 and that makes no sense. So that gives us the separation we need. We know that we have a date code of 18 and a production number of 34,219. This is a great start um, and we can move forward now. So we know that a date code of 18 has to be representational because if it were direct, that would mean 1918, and of course that makes no sense. 
But if it's representational, we take 18 plus 1955, we get 1973, and 1973 seems super plausible. That makes a lot of sense. When we consider that our representational date code of 1973 leaves us with a five-digit production number in the 30,000 block, well, we can know that that's pretty typical of mid-1970s non-26 production. So now we've got a pretty good idea of what we should be looking for in a rifle with that serial number. As long as the features of the rifle bearing that serial number match what we can expect with what we know from context, we can pretty confidently chalk that one up as a good ID. So this is gonna be a 1973 in the 30,000 block. And uh, we can even go ahead and, and say that it's almost certainly gonna be a non-26 uh, Type 56 carbon. So now let's try a little harder one. Again, if you wanna pause, go ahead and do so. But if you're ready to move forward, let's break it down. So just like last time, we start by considering what the possible options are. We could have a date code of nine with a production number of 132,654 or we could have a date code of 91 with a production number of 32,654. So this is where it gets a little bit harder, right? Because both of those seem like very real options. If we have a date code of nine, that would obviously be a representational code for 1964. And I happen to know that State Arsenal 296's production output in 1964 was just over 300,000 meaning that a six-digit production number in the 130,000 block is totally plausible. Conversely, 91 could be a direct date code for 1991. And who am I to say that whatever factory was making these in 1991 didn't churn out at least 32,000? That also seems perfectly plausible. And it is most likely that in 1991, they would be dealing with a five-digit production number. So what do we do? So obviously this is a situation where we actually have to open our eyes and look down at the rifle that we're dating and have a little bit of background on these things in order to make a judgment call. Hopefully you know that a 1964 production State Arsenal 296 Triangle 26 marked Type 56 carbine is gonna look a little bit different than a 1991 commercial production example, even if the serial numbers are technically identical. And that is possible to have technically identical serial numbers on totally different Chinese SKS pattern carbons. Um, so that's about it for the serialization part. Hopefully that made sense to the majority of you. And I imagine that once you pick it up and try that tool a few times, you will realize that it really is pretty basic and it really does work 90% of the time. But now let's talk about the 10% of time in which this rule doesn't work. And in the meantime, we can greet our friends from the beginning of this video who jumped forward to this moment. Congratulations, your aim was impeccable and you made it. So what do we do when we don't have a seven or eight digit numerical serial number or when the rules I've spent most of this video outlining don't work? In most cases, that's actually super cool because it means that you have a particularly historically significant or collectible variant. So let's go over the most common examples of that real quickly. Do you have a four to six digit serial number between 2000 and 220,000? Does your rifle look suspiciously like a non-refurbished late pattern Soviet SKS-45? If so, you've probably got yourself a so-called ghost variant, which represents the first full production run of Chinese manufactured Type 56 carbines made at State Arsenal 296. If your serial number is 84,010 or lower, your rifle was made in 1956 and if your serial number is 84,011 or higher, your rifle was made in 1957. Either way, congratulations, you got a super cool rifle. At one point I'll have a video just on ghost variants, but in the meantime, very cool. Enjoy that rifle, because that's probably my favorite variant of all time. Does your rifle have a four digit numerical serial number with a Latin letter alphabetical prefix along with other features consistent of early production, such as a long barrel look, a blade bayonet, and lightning cuts everywhere? Well, if so, you're probably looking at a so-called letter series, which was manufactured between 1959 and 1960. There's a reasonably high probability that prefixes A through L were manufactured in 1959, 
with prefixes M through Y, manufactured in 1960, but that is speculation. For whatever it's worth, even Chinese Type 56 carbine historians, and when I say Chinese Type 56 carbine historians, I mean Chinese people who are historians of the Type 56 carbine, which is their own rifle, even they seem pretty confused about this. And there is clear dissension in Chinese language articles on this subject. So take that with a grain of rice or salt or whatever. Again, however, if you own one of these, you should be super proud of that because it's a really cool variant, um, kind of dark uh, because they do correspond with the great Chinese famine, which as I've talked about in other videos is one of the most tragic things that's ever happened in human history. And if you've got a Chinese letter series, you have a rifle which was manufactured in the heart of that massive, unprecedented, unmatched loss of life in human history. So it's not cool in like the yay um, history's fun sense, but if you have a healthy appreciation for the fact that these weapons really are time capsules that connect us with real human beings who experienced some of the most significant and oftentimes violent and tragic events in human history that really reflect the human experience in a profoundly humbling and real way, then it's a really cool thing to have in your collection. And I'm certainly proud of mine, which I think is right over here or here, whatever. Next up, does your Type 56 carbine say M21 on the side? Looks like that, or it might look different, but it could look like that. Point being, if you know what an M is and you know what a 21 is, it'll have those together in that order on the receiver. First of all, that is badass. Uh, congratulations on having a super cool rifle. Now, if it's one of the early ones with no arsenal mark, I'm not actually sure how to date those. Sorry, I'm kind of new to M21s, to be honest. I actually just got my first M21. I'm just going to be a video coming soon. Um, I've seen a lot of serial numbers on early M21s, starting with eight or nine. I think there's a very real chance that those numbers do signify 1963 and 1964 respectively, but that is not my area of expertise. Uh, it's not proven to my knowledge, so use your own judgment on that one. As for the later ones, the uh, 0416 or 416 marked ones seem to follow a pretty conventional dating scheme. Um, if you understood the bulk uh, of this video on how to conventionally date a seven or eight digit numerical serial number. That's going to work just fine for your 416 uh, M21s. If you've got a 0296, again, super cool. Not just fluffing myself up because I just got one of them. Um, these are the super weird ones that actually use a three digit direct date code. Super, super weird. They're going to be, the only ones I've seen so far are 709 and uh, this seems to be a direct date code for 1979. Um, I'm going to do a whole video on the nuances here, but main takeaway is if it says 709, that's not 1970. All indicators point to that being 1979. So yeah, if you want to hear more about that, again, I will have another video out on that soon. And if you're watching this video in the future, maybe that video is linked in the description. Who's to say? You're to say if you check. So moving on. Finally, the last major exception you're likely to run into is gonna be with weird commercial oddities. Um, these are typically what I call commercial non-conventional carbines. Uh, if you don't know how I define that term, I define it in other videos, but basically something which is not a traditional Type 56 carbine or Type 56 carbine clone, but something specifically designed for the consumer markets abroad. Um, sometimes these are gonna have serialization that just has no uh, connection to anything. So if you've got one of those, sorry, I, I really can't help you with that. But on the flip side, you can be really safe in assuming it's late 80s, early 90s. And to be honest, like, it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna be a curio and relic anytime soon. Respectfully and frankly, I, I just don't care. They don't interest me. And that's about where I'm going to call this video, guys. I hope I gave 98% of you watching the tools you need to accurately date your Chinese SKS pattern carbine. If you do feel like you learned something valuable from this video and would like to see more content like this in the future, my only request is that you hit like and subscribe. Obviously, this is free content because you just watched it and you didn't give me a dime. I'm cool with that transaction. All it takes is those, those two taps on your phone or clicks of your mouse to keep me motivated 
and invested in future presentations. If you did watch this video and don't feel like I addressed your specific rifle or didn't find my explanations on a certain aspect of this topic clear, please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments below, at least at the time of posting. I've got tons of time for helping people one-on-one -on -one with rifle IDs and that sort of thing in the comments. I enjoy that. I've got people emailing me pictures and stuff. As always, huge thanks to my subscribers, old and new. Big thanks to all the super cool people who have posted comments a lot of really nice support i i really i really thank you guys um for the people who take the time to just say something nice it goes a long way you guys rock that's super cool thanks to all of you we're well on our way to 1k subscribers i'm probably i'm clearly bad enough at youtube that i'm probably pointing in the wrong direction but the main takeaway here is we're moving forward um and i definitely plan to put something uh, special together for commemorating that four-figure milestone. All right, I'm finally going to shut up now, guys. Thanks again. Hope to catch you next time and have an awesome rest of your day.